in order. Uh, I see that we are all present and accounted for. Uh, and I'd like to ask for approval of the minutes. Um, and thanks to Colette for helping me find them. So moved. Okay. <laughs> second. Second. All in favor? Great. Uh, at this point, what I'd like to do is uh, look for a motion to make a change to the agenda. We have a, a seriously time-bound issue uh, <laughs> in terms of approving uh, joint uh, recommendations that we've worked on for a long time at Joint Finance Committee. So I'd look for a motion to, to uh, make that change to the agenda and for us to, uh, with uh, Councillor Johnson's permission to, to handle that item first. Yeah, I'll make a motion to um, amend item four. So the, the first item is the discussion and approval of the joint finance committee statement. A second. All in favor? Okay, great. Uh, it should be at the end of your packet. I thought we'd take a minute to read through it. Uh, you've seen it ahead of time. Uh, we thanks Tom for the numbers yesterday. We plunked in numbers just for background on this. Uh, this represents months of work uh, <laughs> with uh, it seems like longer than that, but months of work. Uh, uh, good, uh, good discussion. A lot of uh, thoughts about how to do things differently in terms of improving our process. So this essentially is a recommendation, a joint recommendation, hopefully a, uni a unanimous recommendation from both both finance committees, uh, which will then be carried forward to the town council and to, to the uh, superintendent and board of ed for their, for their approval. Um, and uh, it basically involves a suggestion of adding some additional metrics for a first reading. People may recall last year we had a lot of trouble uh, getting through the first reading and we thought we needed some room for uh, more precision in our process and, and a way to uh, add another metric or a couple of metrics that would help us sort of get on a flight path on the, on the way to uh, you no know, greater than a 3% no rate overall goal for the municipal budget. So, um, so that's, that's really uh, the intent of this. Um, uh, I'm not going to read through it uh, for everyone, but uh, we will post it. And uh, I, I, at this point in time, I'll look for any discussion or questions about, about the document or any additional commentary. No, I mean, I think, I think the only additional commentary, again, this was just elaborate a little on what Councillor Hamill said. Last year, what we tried to do at the first read is get close to the overall budget target of 3%. What we heard as feedback, what's difficult is to know how to get there. So these numbers, as we worked in committee, are numbers historically that have delivered about that 3% increase in the mill rate. So this is just a starting point is to get us all sort of to a starting point at that first read, and then we will go through our normal budget process to arrive at a, a final budget number. That was the intent. It's not going to be a perfect science, but this was just both, both the town and school said they'd like to have a target that's clear, and this helps do that. So we're, we're trying this out, and we may modify as we go along next year. Yeah, and the only thing I would add is, um, first of all, thanks to the two of you and the BOE, I think it, I thought it was a collaborative process. Uh, and secondly, I believe the BOE is actually voting on this this Thursday. Th this tomorrow Thursday. night. Yep, tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. So it, uh, the reason for us putting this to the top of this agenda is to have this recommendation completed so when the BOE votes on it tomorrow night, it makes more sense for everybody. And so. then we'll follow on on the December 4th meeting uh, uh, to, to review it and approve it uh, as a town council. So. So I make a motion to approve. Second. All in favor? It's unanimous, so thanks very much for uh, the power elementary and process uh, <laughs> twist there, so thank you. If um, only they knew the drama behind the scenes. <laughs> <laughs> it's not really There's a, a whole other story to tell <laughs> remain untold. <laughs> uh, the next agenda item, uh, so I, uh, is the TIP policy. This is the probably the one that's going to be most time consuming and I'll turn it over to uh, Councillor Johnson. Okay, um, so this uh, TIF policy I believe uh, began in April of this year and its first stop was the Rules and Policy Committee and we spent a few meetings at Rules and Policy discussing the framework at which we wanted the TIF policy to include uh, and if memory serves me correctly some of the takeaways before we even crafted anything was um, 
some sort of process that was a little bit more defined up front and for a developer that may be approaching the town um, seeking some sort of TIF or CEA. And I believe additionally, it was also a um, process that might be a little more defined for us, a counselor, a council, excuse me, and the town manager, so we're all on the same page. Um, and I believe there was efforts to harmonize the policy with the application process, so it was pretty clear to eat wherever you are in the policy, you should be able to find where that policy is reflected in the application process. Uh, and then I believe we brought it to finance, once it came out of rules and policy, it was brought to finance in January, uh, no, January. May. June, I think it got voted June. out of rules and policy. Yeah, June. And uh, we were in the throes of budget season, so it took a little bit of a back burner. But we have uh, electronically been adding our comments and our suggestions for each, uh, each part of this policy. So where we are today is, my understanding is to go uh, through each one of our individual's comments and have some discussion around it and I believe see, we are, see where we are after that. So. So with that, I thought we'd just move through the document and deal yep. with questions along the way rather than have a, a special period of time for discussion. So. Yep. yep. So lead on. I did like the first comment, which was Paul's suggestion of how to make the comment. <laughs> so it was your you know, unanimous support for that. <laughs> <laughs> and a big need for it. Yeah, right. So, right. That out. Yeah. Uh, and I'd say, if we could, maybe if the person who was the author uh, would want to uh, yeah, chime in on the comment, I think Orange, is that Ruth? Yes. So, or the or staff, in her absence, I guess, would be good. And um, so I'm not sure. Are you looking at the printed copy in your agenda, or? Yeah, we're looking at the printed copy, because okay. they're so all color-coded. Okay, so we've got it pulled up on here as well. There, um, Don, you got eliminated out of the agenda. I'll be, yeah. Because of some formatting challenges. So. Okay, is that, does uh, Don, is Don up there? Don is here. Okay, so we'll go off this, that's fine. Okay. okay. Yep. But we're, I think we're going off what? The screen. I think the only thing I did is I highlighted my. But you had comment, you had. Commented on Don's comments. You did a really great job following Paul's directions. No, it's not you. <laughs> it's not you, it's me. <laughs> I'll get it straight one of these days. Google is, is dogging me badly still. So I'm so. going to resolve Paul's comment there. Yep. Uh, <laughs> so I'll, I guess I could speak to Ruth's uh, general point. I think it comes up several <coughs> times. There is, in state statute, there's actually uh, one of the newest forms of TIFs, which are the affordable housing TIFs. And we have a couple in right. town. And in fact, I'm meeting with a uh, potential interested party with another one tomorrow, as soon as tomorrow. This policy was really intended for the economic development type TIFs. Uh, so, you know, staff is kind of mixed opinions as to whether there should be a kind of a separate section that deals with the uniqueness of an affordable housing TIF in this policy, whether it be a separate standalone. But we have them, I, I think we could, should anticipate more in the future, and I think um, what's good for the goose is good for the gander, that we ought to have a, a similar process um, application and the like uh, that, would, that would follow that, those expectations. And it just seemed to, to us as you're looking through this, um, you know, the reasons to do the economic development tips really are, from a policy perspective, different. Right. And the housing can be articulated differently. I suppose it could be part of the same at the end, but just keeping it separate so people know what they're what they're looking at and what the council's objectives are for each. And rules and policies also address this question. And um, rules and policies came down on the, the side of this is an economic development TIF policy, and that any need for an affordable housing policy should be dealt with separately. So I guess I would ask uh, some threshold questions there. Uh, one, does it make sense to this group to uh, have a, a companion or similar process for the affordable housing type? And if so, should we find a way to incorporate it in this overall policy or separate standalone? Uh, I, I'd suggest it'd be nice if we could follow the same policy, but if they could plug in along the way where appropriate, rather than have a whole, unless the process is wholly different. I don't know. I, you know, I, I think the process is different, yeah. um, you know, in terms of what's required in each of the uh, TIFs by state statute. That doesn't mean you couldn't sort of have two sections as economic development and then follow it by housing. Um, you could, you know, you could simply do it that way. Um, but in other words, not that we want to sip, skip forward, but... You know, if you're talking about the a housing tip, I would not think SEDCO would be involved in that. 
whereas SEDCO right. is processing economic development TIFs. And your application may be different. Okay. And the evaluation criteria right. may be different right. Right. as well. So, so I, from, I like to keep it simple, stupid. So it, to me, it might be cleaner to have two distinct policies so that you're not trying to interpret which applies where. Mm -hmm. I mean, we should use as much similar language as we can in processes, mm -hmm. but I think it might be easier just to have a policy for, I don't know how your others feel, but that's. I echo that. I, I think they should be, I think, <clears throat> align on when it makes sense, and they should be separate when it makes sense, but I, I, I think it should be a separate application, separate policy. The, the criteria that we're concerned with, with in this policy and the process we're concerned with doesn't necessarily apply to affordable housing TIF all the time. Um, this is, you know, we're, we're giving incentives for economic development, and that's what this is geared towards. So I would, I'd echo what you just said. So, so uh, if I'm hearing everybody correct, I would suggest we, we accept that as, as proposed as an edit. So, and then. Uh, or even a whole separate endeavor. Right. Yeah. yeah. I think it, it, it yeah. would require a different effort. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't think it really affects this document because it was drafted right. mm -hmm. without uh, speaking to it. Can, right. I, can I make a suggestion? Go ahead. Larissa, said, would you mind reading the comments? I mean, just because I can't see, and then Dawn's comments are up here, so maybe it might help that if you drive sure. the comments and then we respond to them. Okay, next question, uh, sure. next comment comes from Councillor Hayes, um, and he has highlighted the text, this does not include residential development projects, and his question is, how did Scarborough Downs residential qualify? Yeah, so I, I just want to make sure we don't have inconsistencies mm -hmm. in what we've done before sure. to where we are now, and if there are, mm -hmm. what's our rationale? So. It, Am I right that it did apply mm -hmm. to Scarborough Downs? It, it did. So there, there are two different types of economic development tips, you know, if you will. Um, one is you're designating an area as opposed to a specific parcel. And the state law says um, in an area, um, to be designated as a TIF district, you need 25% of the um, property available for commercial development. So that's why you, in a mixed-use uh, project, you can have both, um, but on an individual project, if somebody came forward and said, hey, I'm developing a residential neighborhood and it's going to be great for economic development, it would be, sorry, we can't, we can't do that. Uh, but as part of a whole project, you could. So as long as the 25% commercial threshold is met. Right. But don't we need some qualifiers in? Because this this is this, this this policy is then meant to apply to both of those scenarios, isn't it? I'm not following you. So are you saying this is this is? I mean, there are this is Scarborough tax increment financing policy and process sounds mm -hmm. broad. Right. You just described two different sort of right two different scenarios. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One where residential would be included, mm -hmm. one where it wouldn't. Right. But shouldn't, so this just clear, if you read this mm -hmm. literally, with this policy, we'd never have a situation where we would allow with the language that's there. Right. That, so this does not include solely residential development properties, tragics? I mean, I, I'm not sure you need the statement at, at all. I think, um, you know, one of the things you, we want to do is we have to follow the state statute. Um, no matter what our policy is, we have to follow the state statute. Now, we can make it clearer, and I think that's one of those things that um, we can do as well, is to have the particulars of the state statute attached um, to that, and I would always suggest that we do that when we're working with applicants. But I guess all I'm trying to avoid is, mm -hmm. if this goes live, the first question yep. someone's going to ask us, mm -hmm. why did Scarborough Downs get a TIF on residential properties? Okay. When this says they can't. So unless we have some way mm -hmm. to tease that out in this document, okay. I, I don't have the answer with the language mm -hmm. around that. Right. And we can certainly describe, and, and I think somebody further along pointed out that there are some, maybe there's some definitions that would be helpful to this. Um, so it could be that we can um, define the, the types of, of economic development tips as part of a definition. Um, but I agree this this statement is a bit confusing. So do you amend out. it? So I guess my question, should we amend this sentence if it stays in? This this may not include residential development. You know, so it's or I, I might say um, residential uh, development can be included as part of a mixed-use development 
that meets the state statute. So can, or, you, got, can you just suggest some language that yeah, would? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, that was a big issue. I mean, look, in retrospect, I know as a yeah. whole principle, the one thing we were learning early on was don't and don't provide incentives to developers for building residential, right. you know, the residential construction. They're in that business. They right. shouldn't, unless it's low-income housing or some unique <coughs> version of that. We shouldn't be paying them for what they do for a living. Well, I think there's a definition issue here because. I guess the downs wouldn't be a residential development. It's a mixed use development. With yeah. residential. Correct, but, th but it's a different, I'm just, I'm just saying yeah. back to the definitions because yeah, yeah. what Peter's saying is when I'm reading this like a residential development, if somebody asked me is the downs a residential development, I would say no. Yeah. It's a mixed use development. Yeah. So it's like Eastern Village would be a residential you know, Right, right. so I just think that we need to clear sure. the definitions up okay. because if statute is saying that it can be 25% right. residential, that's the criteria. Right. at least. That's the criteria. Right. Right. Twenty five percent commercial. Commercial, excuse me. Yeah. So you could do a number of things. You, you could add the word only to really be specific. You want to keep this language. You could remove the sentence altogether, or if, alternatively, Karen could come up with uh, a, a new sentence that more clearly um, describes what it applies to. Mm -hmm. The mixed use. Or we could add a sentence that directly references the state statute, because that's what this is really. Because I mean, if somebody w wants to. It's, it's permitted, still, right? I mean, it's permitted, but it's no, it's right. not, right? It's, you can't. A developer can't, can't do this right now. Only. You can't I, do a TIF for. No, you, you cannot do. You can't do it by only in an economic development TIF. Which is what we're doing. Yeah. Exactly. Right. But but, so Paul, I think what you're saying. But when I look at this, it says Scarborough Tax Increment Financing Policy. That to me is we're talking at the highest level of the different types of TIFs that we can have. Yep. That one sentence would imply that under no circumstances, no matter what type of development. No, I agree with what you're saying. Yeah. So, yeah. so we either can say, I think Tom's suggestion was, this does not include residential only development projects. That would be the probably clearest way to say that. Well, and, and I would I would add economic development to the title of this. Oh, okay, so anyway, you gotcha. <laughs> yeah, I think we, I think we understand. Exactly. The problem. You'll solve it. Yeah, somehow. right. You'll, you you'll, you'll do your magic wand. You're you'll solve it. Right. We're all good. Thank yes. you. Yes. But now that we have decided to separate economic development and, and housing, it makes sense to put that in the title. This is the, your your economic development um, tax increment financing policy and process. I'd be okay with that. You guys okay with that? Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay, next comment. We have a um, an additional uh, language addition suggestion um, from Councilor Hamill. So in the sentence under applications, applications for tax increment financing requested by a developer or business will be considered by town staff and the Scarborough Economic Development Corporation, SEDCO, and Mr. Councilor Hamill suggests reviewed for recommendation to the town council by the finance committee, then, and then continuing with the existing language with all final approvals vested with the Scarborough Town Council and the main DECD. So let me explain my rationale. So I think there's a benefit to having a come through committee. There's other work they can, additional work they can do and focus. And if it comes with a recommendation, I think it might make the rest of the process easier. Generally, I'm not in favor of adding steps, but that one is, is something I think uh, would be useful. And in the past, I think if we had, you know, if we had done that, we would have, uh, you know, it would have been a more deliberative process than it was. So that's, given the opportunity to start fresh, that's why I, I propose that language. And I believe I highlighted the wrong section. I meant to agree with your language. I believe I, I agreed with something. So <laughs> okay. Yes. All right. Yeah. So <laughs> for just from a procedure standpoint, if all of you are in agreement with the comment that's been made or language that's been suggested, I can record that by simply resolving, resolving it. and it will just add it right in. So are you comfortable with that choice being made? Sure. Yeah. Yes. Yep. So what we just did there is require it to come through finance before the town council. Yeah. Yep. yep. The only thing I'll say from a drafting point of view, since a, another town committee worked on this, there may be interest on the part of council to appreciate the changes that finance has rec has recommended. I mean, so you can get that from a tracking point of view. You can do it from version history. Yeah. We should have it in the version okay. history. I just want I to get that. If not, I will watch the meeting painstakingly yeah. and record it. <laughs> but it, it good, good luck. Yeah, you may not agree with me, but it may be value in no, just understanding fine. what yeah, pieces of it you're touching. And the Ruth's comment, I, I don't think we need Doesn't to consider apply. given the. Um, um, next comment discussion. comes in from Councillor Hayes, um, is suggesting additional language, I believe. Um, although I'm not showing where that language you're suggesting it be. 
Well, I, I couldn't figure out how to put okay. comments in, so I so, had to. Um, so it, can you let us, where would you? Yeah, I mean, my thought was, my only concern with this, and this was my concern with the Scarborough Downs TIF, what we do have the ability to do is designate a certain portion of the TIF funds that we can set aside and put into an account that we can use for infrastructure. And that became contentious because I think in the past things like town hall or other things have used those types of funds to do things. And so I don't know the exact mechanism, but that makes me nervous that we could have a town council that decided they wanted to put 10% of the TIF and set it aside. What happens is when you set aside those monies, you get around the charter intent of anything over 400000 has to go to the voters. And so I don't know how others feel, but I think there should be governor on this. I don't think the town council should have the unilateral right to come up with any percentage they want to be withheld because that you still, people still talk about the town hall and how the town hall was done way back when. So I think there needs to be a checkpoint. I don't know how you, what you guys think about it, but right now we have the, you know, I mean, we can, there's no limit on how much we can set aside, is there, Tom? Nope. I well, mean, we a statutory can. limit. I mean, there's a, the statute uh, directs as to what sorts of things you can, uh, are qualified. Yep. So it's not a universe of options, but uh, you could choose to do 100% if you wished. And, and, and the concern becomes when we set it aside into that type of fund, then we have comp blanche to do infrastructure investments mm -hmm. without it going through the charter process and the referendum process and the voter approval process. So we can't build buildings, though. It has to be road infrastructure, correct? <laughs> the state made that not allowable. Because right. of Scarborough, right. quite right. frankly. Yeah. Yeah. It, well, it was perfectly allowable under the state law, but they yeah. closed that loophole, I'm told, because of Scarborough's because, use. But, but it can be used for, I mean, there may be a, a major highway improvement we want to do, right? Mm -hmm. Which is currently exempt under the charter as well. All right, well, then give me an example of what we yeah, can right. use well, it for. Well, no, actually, that's a good question. Let's talk about it. What, what would be an example that we could use those funds for that would so normally we're... trigger their charter? I'll have to. Well, I mean, if you were making a sewer, if you were, sewer. If you were going to make a, a sewer investment. And I think Tom separated out for us, um, you know, the requirement is if you're going out to bond more than 400000 not just in expenditure. Is that correct? Um, that's that, what I can't remember. No, no, you're right, but that's another bone of contention because the original, uh, when we readdress the charter, okay. the original contention was they meant it to be any expenditure over okay. four hundred. The way it got crafted, yep. that is okay. the way we've done it if it goes to bonding. Okay. But, it, but it, the, really the intent is what the voters, the charter, I think wanted to do is to put up, and I think Paul, your suggestion is 400 is not the right number anymore. That right. needs to be. Right. 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 But right. so I don't. So I'm only raising this. I don't have a solution. But I think either either the solution is we put some type of cap on this on what the town council has authority to do, or we say that you know if it's going to be over two percent, it needs to go to referendum or something. Well, is it just <laughs> trying to sort out? Is it the percentage or is it the expenditure, because I would think that if it's um, any policy that you set about expenditures are not, ex you know, it, money in the TIF fund would not be exempt from those requirements. Uh, you, I, you're no, just, I, it's just a way, way of saving the money. No, I, I thought when we had this conversation under the Scarborough Downs that once you set TIF money <laughs> aside into this account, it is a unilateral authority of the town council that they can use it on appropriate projects, infrastructure projects, as however it's defined. And we bootstrapped ourselves further by saying, and that appropriation would be done through the annual budget process. So there's uh, additional layers of public scrutiny, review, and council approval. So, so I would say, oh, we, we purposely imposed that on ourselves, at least as regards the downtown right. TIF most recently. So that, yeah. that's why I would say anything that that, um, you know, this is a source of funds, but approval to use them would go through your normal... No. Well, it goes through the town council process. But Correct. Let's use the... Give me something we could say that sewer okay. you wanted to do. Yeah. Was 800000 Yeah. Normally, if we were going to bond an $800,000 sewer under the current charter, mm -hmm. it would have to go to referendum. 
if we had 800,000 sitting in this TIF reserve account, Tom's right, it would right. be an appropriation in the budget, mm -hmm. okay. but the town council could approve it. It would okay. never go to the voters. We right. would get public input, that's correct. Mm -hmm. Right. So I don't know under this whether if we say once, if we're going to set aside, we pretty much know how much it is, right? Mm -hmm. If we say 3% of the TIF, right. if it's going to be more than X dollars, it needs to go to the voters to say that they approve the town council to have that authority. I don't know where you guys follow. Yeah, that. so I, I, the only thing I'd push back a little bit, I think we, I don't think we're allowed to consider the intent of the charter, right? It's written the way it is, right? So although I don't disagree that some people probably thought it was expenditure and bond. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's just not the way it is I mean, right the, now. That's going to be addressed in Correct, the Correct, right. Process, so, but. so when we're making this decision, I just want to be clear that I don't want that. Yeah. What, right. Yeah. So with that being said, I think mm -hmm. similar to the state statute throw the reference, I think we could probably put language in here that just essentially harkens to the or draws off the charter. Okay. That I, I I don't I don't know if we can, but I would think. Yeah, I think a, a reference to the charter was is right. better to do more generic uh, because as the yeah. charter changes, right? If the charter changes, changes you right. don't have to come back and touch right. your policy. And then that sure. will that will address your concern. Yep. So yep. we can say that the we could say, I'm not. This is not official language because I'm not good at mm -hmm. talking. But <laughs> <laughs> we could essentially say that you know any expen any expenditures out of this TIF fund. Are, are held to the same requirements as outlined of in the town charter or, or what have you. I'm okay with that because then that would trigger the 500K. Yeah, but I guess that doesn't address your loophole concern. So perhaps we could say any expenditure out of this TIF fund must comply with the requirements my, of the town charter. With, with, well, yeah, but then that still leaves the loophole that I think Peter's yeah, concerned about. Sends them to the same dead end. Like I, they could. What's the loophole? The loophole is that essentially if, if there's a million dollars sitting in that TIF fund, the council can spend that million dollars on sewer without going to the voters. Only because the current charter language has an exclusion for those sorts of investments. But, oh, I thought sewer wasn't. I thought that was our example that it wasn't. I don't recall. Yeah. But yeah. There's a number of stated exclusions from yeah. that requirement. Let me ask a hypothetical question. I'm interested in your response. <coughs> this group, uh, this council is likely to receive a proposal for me to establish an equipment reserve account, something that we've talked about. Let's assume we're wildly successful and have millions of dollars built up over time. That would be a good thing. And a fire truck is ready to be purchased. It's in excess of the threshold limit that the charter, charter at the time. In that scenario, do you see the council having the authority to approve that project? That's I would still. say yes, I, because I think that we're moving in the direction of you know whether we bound it or whether we bond it or we you have to find some other source of funds. It's still an expense, and we gotta we're gonna have that discussion. I mean, we're having it now about everything. So, so you're saying it should it should you, go to the voters? I would say no. In that case, you'd say no. It doesn't go to voters. If we have, if we're establishing a a depreciation account that's made specifically to actually avoid bonding, no, we're not. No, I mean the original intent to create the reserve account yep. was to get out of the scenario that when we do have a million dollar hit because these pieces right. of equipment are getting right. expensive. That's exactly my point. Right. We already have money built up, but it wasn't that I had thought the intent was that just is to create the pool of money. That's how we fund it. Mm -hmm. Right. But the charter would still say, or I would interpret the charter to still say that the voters still need to decide whether they want to spend that equipment reserve fund. I think it's a difference. I mean, if right. we... I guess what I'd say, if we set up an equipment reserve fund specifically for a piece of equipment, mm -hmm. that might be a different question. But that's essentially what this TIF, this right. TIF fund is. That's, that's why I think it's an interesting conversation to have, because a TIF fund is a reserve fund for infrastructure later on down the road. It's funding of stated right. priorities, whether it's traffic improvements or funding economic development initiatives, whatever at the time. And you build that over time and presumably spend it. Well, point. we even talked about that for other things, right. like modules and things like that, other expenses. That we yeah. do that through impact fees or through through this. It's, so it's you're going to have. My my point is, we're you're going to have people hunting high and low for money, okay? And we're pretty tapped out, you know. Uh, not well, that's a solid state, point, right? <laughs> not according to the state, but but according to uh, you know uh, what our numbers are telling us. 
So we're going to have people looking for other sources of funds. So it seems to me if you have a requirement on uh, for bonding alone that's already been we've been bobbing and weaving around successfully or cutting it in half so we can you know buy laptops you know that kind of thing we we should try to apply the same rigor to other large expenditures and and being specific about their uses if we can without triggering you know uh, a battle over what it really means so I just yeah, I just think that's you know the, the general sense I have about the the environment that we're in and we're going to be in for a while it there's going to be more more struggling with figuring out how we you know, something may look profitable, it may look like a great deal, but can we afford it? So how does this language work? Is After the sentence, the town has the right to retain TIF proceeds for public infrastructure improvements or TIF eligible expenses that may be located inside or outside the district, period. New language proposal. Any expenditures out of this TIF fund may only be spent in keeping with the requirements set forth in the town charter. Yes. Does everyone feel good about that? Sure. And there will be Perfect. a discussion, yes. debate. Well, I don't want to. I don't want to give up on this because I don't know if we've actually addressed your concern. I, I, I mean, I, I think that's as good as it gets. I yeah. Think you've, yeah. Been, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. you've effectively punted that discussion for when it's. That's true. Really we did just punt that. Right. Yeah. No, that I'm is not a, sure if we can do any better. Yeah. Frankly. Yeah. No, but that that will be okay. That will be a different finance committee because we will yeah. be faced with that equipment reserve. And I do like making okay. decisions based off no. other people having to deal with it later down the road. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> That right. equipment but reserve uh, hypothetical will be 10 years before we have it. Before we yeah. have it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 To invoke that yes. part. Right. But um, yeah, I think you've correctly, I think you need to observe your charter. You can't, you, you can't violate that anyway, but, so let's state it. Um, but you've effectively put off that deci decision for when you've got a real uh, expenditure situation. Yep. And, okay. and it makes so much sense to spend, you know, you, you spend money that you're reserving through the TIP funds. You may have laid out <coughs> specific purposes, but you're spending it in the same way that you would want, that you would need to spend any other funds that you are um, having access to. So it, that seems to make it. Yeah, I mean, what, um, as we know, but we're trying to turn the tide on is this distrust with our community with things that we do. The more they think we're trying to take things out of their control, the more pushback we'll get. I think this is a nice finesse. To, yes. to, to, so thank you. It's a perfect solution. Next, I suggest. Yes, I next. <laughs> yeah, let's move on <laughs> while we're ahead. Uh, next is <clears throat> Councillor Hamill's suggestion of, of adding in the language residential construction projects not included. Have we addressed that in the previous conversation regarding that same concern? I think so. Okay. I think we've so uh, is it okay to just resolve yes. to say no to that language because yep, we've addressed that we, that's not it's an It's the exact option? same issue we just talked about. Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, and then the next is um, in the paragraph TIF districts may be designated for up to 30 years. The designation of a TIF district requires legal notice of public hearing, the majority vote of the municipal legislative body, and current language says end state approval. Councillor Hamill is suggesting adding the language public referendum between majority vote of the municipal legislative body and state approval. There he goes again. So, I mean, it's, uh, yeah. So, do you mind if I? Yeah, go ahead. Because my comment to this was the creation of the district, <coughs> a TIF district can be very small. So, TIF districts can be one parcel big. If I'm saying this correctly, Correct. so VIP Auto on Route 22 is that 22? You mm -hmm. say 114. In 114 VIP on, Auto on. If 22. I'm, am I correct in saying that they're their own little TIF district? I'm not even aware. I didn't think that's a. I'm not confused. aware of that's a TIF. We'll, we'll take um, um, your points well taken. It yeah. can be a single parcel. Right. Okay. Do we have any single parcels in town, or we, am I making things do. up? We okay. do. Um, uh, you, I guess. Uh, um, Yes, well, that's a um, ha affordable housing tip, uh, but Science Park, um, the <coughs> old Humpty Dumpty, or no, Conica, sorry, is a um, where they did Coastal Women's Health. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That was a single parcel tip. So I guess my so so do we? I think there's times that we view this through the lens of the downs, but then we also have to say, okay, well, big. right. But, but I, that, I still don't want that to be a, a loophole for. The big guys. Yep, you know, which I think is so, fair. So, so, so do you split the hair, so to speak, and put some type of total value of the property on it? If, if the... Yeah, I mean, I, mean, so, I, I so was just looking at SACOS, and they had guidelines for all applicants, you, yeah, know, I, um, you know, the project creates significant tax value equal or greater than 750000 and oh, creates okay. 15 new full-time jobs. I mean, this was 20, this was... 
1997. So, I mean, but, but that's a different issue. The public referendum is a, is a, with all due respect, is a totally different conversation point. But it's the same question about how do you trigger the referendum. You know, so it's like, Does Saco have a referendum requirement? Uh, they, right. No, no they don't. Yes. But they have gate. They have gating requirements that that sort of address that. Which I think there's a you few know, in yeah. this policy as you dig deeper. At the, th you know, yeah. at the threshold. In terms of what it's qualifies. It's got to be so big. It's yeah. got to be right. so many jobs. It's got to be. Uh, and there are you know uh, minimum you know minim maximum recapture percentages based upon the length of the TIF. So there are things that, other things like that where they've got more. More specifics than ours does, and I'm not saying we have to like nail every single floorboard down on the first pass here, but um, that's kind of a big one. We keep coming, coming around, and going around to it. Now I know we're you know a year away from the charter, but we tend to be putting a lot of things in the old charter bucket, you know. Well, that is the controlling document, though. That's the problem. Yeah, that's the document that the voters approve. Yeah. those are the rules of engagement. That's right. what they said. That's the document where they provide very clear guidance as to what your authority is and what it isn't. So if we did something like that, you're saying that it would be a violation of the charter and it wouldn't pass muster if we were to set up? No. No, I, no, I, I guess what I'm a, saying is I if... I think it's it, a reasonable request in, in this context, in my view. If an, if, if, one per, if one owner wants to go and take a, a half-acre parcel of yep. land and yep. they want some sort of CEA, right. a, require, a prereq for that CEA is going to be to create a TIF district. Right. So this isn't even talking about money, this is about creating a district. Yep. Yep. So we, if we went to the polls to create a district, yep. district yep. I see. That, that's yeah, what I'm, I'm saying. I'm, so, this, I'm now, so, so, could we, so could we put some, I mean, I agree. So the threading the needle about something like Scarborough Downs, yep. I would have thought would have involved 80 yep. million bucks probably should have gone to referendum. But, but I think that, that wasn't the TIF district. That was the credit enhancement. Right. Uh, well, but, but it, you know, we're, we're like, yeah, that's the second step. Okay, once we take the first step, we're well, no, but it's the second page. So yeah. it, it, I think no, we can I have mean a... in the process. I right. did not put okay, it. oh, <laughs> right. so, you know what I mean. Once so we're halfway down the road to doing it, and we haven't talked numbers yet. So I mean, I, I understand that the old the old two step shuffle with TIFs and CEAs, but you get into it pretty quickly, and then um, it'd be nice for us to have. And, and it, I I kind of agree with this point that it may not be here. It may it may be in the CEA part of this, but. Um, That's what I was trying to say. Because I, I, I just I was the, I the second. <laughs> so is there someplace else? Yeah, because there's good. There's uh, so I think this conversation we're having could happen. I just think it, five minutes from now. Correct. No. Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> I mean, it, I mean, <laughs> yes. could I but just, I guess, I guess yeah, yeah. <laughs> when we get there, the only thing I'd offer would be in order to thread the needle between large projects versus the small projects. Yep. That when we get to that conversation, maybe we have something that says if it's more than a 10-acre parcel or some number, a 5-acre parcel, 15-acre parcel, so we can separate the mega sort of opportunities from the smaller ones. And, and maybe we just table this till we get there. But that, I do like the idea of a public referendum for some of these. Right, but are you talking about dollar amount or size? Because... <laughs> Because I, I was just trying to, I mean, we right. could use dollars, but I was trying to get to your example right. of a half acre. I mean, do we really want to be messing around with a half acre? No, probably but not. under what we were talking about, the idea that you just kicked around, we'd have to bring the Scarborough Downs request for 15 extra acres to referendum right now. Yeah, which, so, well, it's, that, so it's another topic, but that is a good question. So you have a, a single zone, and they're, so if that zone expands, I don't know what the plans were for the original zone, but if we keep accreting, you know, to that, Every time they do it, it just, just gets added to the tip no. and No, and so I just want to just yeah, clarify. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. No, me too. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, just Somebody bring us back, please. Sure, sure. So just a clarification on, on, on that. Um, just because you do a zone change um, does not automatically bring that into the tip. Right, so that's um, what we're talking about later tonight. That yeah. was a question. The, yeah. Yeah. That yeah. doesn't, that doesn't qualify it for the CEA. Nope. Correct. Okay. And uh, we... we we talked with DECD earlier to make sure okay. the that's map good. of the district is the that's conforming. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, we got that answer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, so, can we, so, yeah. to the so, public referendum question, though, I, can I, am I allowed to venture on another? Yes, to think yes. About venture it? another <laughs> solution. I, one of the things, and, and Scarborough is a, is a large enough town, but it's still populated with human beings. I think that one of the, con the concerns when you're thinking about which businesses get to, you know, in kind of 
start a TIF process and which ones don't. I would hate to have a public referendum so that an unpopular business owner is, you know, so you're, you're taking it out of a, a group of people that we have elected in theory to be kind of impartial, um, dig deep, spend the time to really look at the issues, not the immediate reaction. And, and I, I just think there might be some danger in uh, it becoming a popularity contest in some form for well, TIF I mean, that That is something that occurred to me with the idea. This policy was crafted using Portland's, um, Mexico's, and Freeport's. Free ports. Um, and none of those communities, and neither does SACO's, calls for a public referendum. And I'm, I'm thinking that there's probably some large public policy reasons behind that. Like I can understand maybe putting some language in that's like some, like SACO's so that there's some, um, some more uh, narrowing of, of how things get through, but I think that there's a reason that public referendum is is considered not part of these policies. Hmm. And it, it also, just because you don't have it in the policy doesn't preclude you right. Right. from saying, right, yeah. this is a big well, enough well, issue and we want know, to... At some level, anything's possible, yeah. but what's likely, what's probable? So this is the argument that I hear all the time, and sure. it, you know, I, I, it makes me kind of twitch, because... <laughs> You know, <coughs> right, that's right, but how many times has it happened? Never, okay? okay. I can't, how many times have we done that? It, it, doesn't, it doesn't require a referendum. How many times have we had a referendum where it wasn't required in Scarborough? How many times? Zero. No. Zero? It was an advisory on casino years ago. Well, I mean, how many years ago? It happens infre infrequently. So, and, and what's happening is we're getting more, you know, more pitches across the plate here. One, two, you know. We have a big one less than a year from the the, the first big one. So I, you know, it's time. It's really time for us to sort of resolve the issue. It's probably not here where we're going to do it, but uh, mm. you know, we we keep uh, going around the maypole with it. Can I offer some insight yeah. or a suggestion? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a we're this is the wrong place to discuss, have the discussion, as I've voiced before. But when you're entering into a CEA with a private developer, it's going to be very clear how much that, if we do everything appropriately, it'll be very clear how much the value of that CEA yep. is, mm -hmm. right? So if we are concerned about the value of that CEA over threshold X, it goes to the voters, right. then let's talk about that. Right. Okay. okay. Well, that's, that's what... Okay. So then let's refocus on that because I feel like if that's something that we should talk about, I think that's, that would be more fruitful and a little bit more... Yeah, absolutely. Right. It, so right. that's where I was, that, that we either yeah. focus on the value right. or you focus on the size. But, right. but either, I mean, to get to your point, I think it'd be worse to decide, pick winners and losers who is right. going to go to referendum. Right. Mm -hmm. Rather than just saying we're not picking winners and losers, we're just saying over this threshold, and it could, you know. Right, that's my that's, point. Right. Yeah. So I'm yeah. I'm comfortable with a threshold. And I think honestly, I think today we're not going to come up with that threshold, but I think we can start the conversation and socialize it and see if it like, what is that threshold? That's I don't know if I know enough about a typical CEA and what's considered okay. a large CEA versus, mm -hmm. you know. So, so do we keep? the change in here and then staff will come back with a number well like this again is not about money this is just about the land so uh, where this so well when we get so yes exactly. some, somehow where yep. is the right place to have the yep. conversation yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. All right, gotcha. sorry i'm just trying is there a call sure. for can yeah. anyone remember in, in the next few pages when we get to the credit enhancement agreement is there a space where referenda is brought up again i think we that's what i think we could explore Right, but so is it already? Is, I'm just wondering how to resolve this comment if if we want to. Oh, we're just gonna leave it there. Okay. No, we're. I, so I moved to delete. So it. I've forgotten. Oh, yeah. I, I'm moving to delete it there. The yeah. like the, yeah. the referendum yeah. in uh, the tip part. Yes. Yeah. Yep. I'm okay with that. Yep. Okay. Could, but it's got to be someplace else though, and it's got to be defined at some point. Um, right. So let's talk about that. Yeah. Okay. Could I just make one point? In my experience dealing with TIFs in, in this state in particular, uh, I think every deal, because it's real estate focused, uh, is time sensitive. And so the, the, the notion, I just feel compelled to bring it up, the notion of adding you know, a public referendum component and kind of the lead time associated with just the uh, execution of that uh, potentially is, you know, adds a, a level of burden that may not be workable uh, just because of the time sensitivity. And we can't anticipate all the deals. I, I do feel like I need to share the Conica building. 
uh, just to appreciate the circumstances, it was a fairly small project. It was a single building. It was fairly run down. Um, it was coming forward in 2009 or 10, kind of in the depths of uh, the recession. And they had some unique uh, infrastructure costs in terms of connectivity to Route 1. So in the whole scheme of things, it didn't make much sense. But I think the council at the time was tickled that someone was willing to, frankly, invest anything, given the kind of dark times we were in. Um, and so a project like that may make perfect sense, given the circumstance that we can't even anticipate this point. Uh, at the time, it, it, it sailed through, but it was really kind of of little consequence in, in the whole scheme of things. And I, I would just, that's the danger of getting too specific here is you lose flexibility and we can't anticipate all the scenarios that are going to come at us in the future. That's just an overriding comment. No, and that's good, but, that, but I think that can be addressed by the size. And frankly, something the size of Scarborough Downs, we may have benefited from taking, I mean, what we have seen happen, I think developers use that ploy very well. It, it's always, we need a decision in 90 days, or we need a decision mm -hmm. in 60 days. Some of that is the market forces, but some of that also is they, sure. they're they very experienced at getting, if the faster it goes, the less due diligence is done, and I think that, mm -hmm. so anyway. And there's right. also a level of complexity. These are complicated things, yeah. and um, yeah. it's hard enough to get the decision makers currently to understand the right. particulars, to socialize that out to the the public is is an even more yeah. daunting challenge. But I, I tell you, I, I think that was better than the forecaster quote. Yeah. <laughs> well, I would say, I but there is a way for us to reframe this in terms of what it means to voters. Like, okay, your tax bill is this, your tax bill would be this if you agree to it. Okay, those are two clear numbers that. But you, I don't think you way. can't do that with CA. Well, you okay. can't. You can't articulate that well, uh, accurately. Well, well, okay. Then there ought to be some then it's incumbent on us to find some other proving ground for that so we don't just approve it and then see what happens. Or is it incumbent on us to have our stuff in order enough to actually just make the decision on it? Well, you could argue that. Yeah, right. I, Remember, so, but, so these are predicated on value that doesn't exist. No dollars get reimbursed until value is created. And so I think we're getting smarter about including in that um, equation or that analysis the cost to serve whatever's coming right yeah right so that sort of value judgment of impact on tax bills incredibly difficult to predict with accuracy given all the inputs but again the premise of this whole program is that but for a level of public assistance vis-a-vis -a, -vis a TIF and credit enhancement this project and therefore its value would not exist in your tax base now I do all projects, uh, are they that black and white? Probably not. I think there's some level of investment would occur anyway. Yeah. But that's the background. I think we're stuck because it's just, I mean, there's some of these that are monsters and then there's some of these that are not. So we have to try to reconcile that. So yeah, yeah, I mean, I think, I think the point is a fair one. I think we started with a, with a monster. It was one of the biggest... You'll right. never see, right. right. never see another one. I know. I'm sure it'll be downhill from here. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, downhills be easy. No, yeah. no downhill is sky's the Check the footnote. <laughs> Again, my suggestion is we should leave the public referendum stuff in there and either in this policy or before it's finalized, come up with some threshold, either dollar or land, whatever everybody yeah. comes with that says, so it's flip fair plain rules. But can we put that in the CEA? In the C, can we put it yeah, yeah. where? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't care where it sits. I have right. written a note that says move to CEA. Session. Okay, that's all. I, that's all I was trying to. I just there's, it's just an important distinction in my mind, and that's we can fine. have this debate. That's, that's okay. fine. But it's still you know even in TF, even in TIF land it was seven million dollars, right? The yeah, TIFs have no, but TIF has no value. The, the well, TIF district has six point seven million dollars <coughs> to the guys who bought it. Well, that's the present value of it, but we're just doing the captured oh, value above. Wrong baseline. I'm not a math guy. Okay. So yeah. the okay. finance committee. Conceptually, you know. You've, you've next got comment? The, yes, next <laughs> comment. Very good. Let's move us along. Um, yeah. Next comment comes from Ruth. Um, she's highlighted the word documentation. I'm not sure where this would go, but a definition section should be included. Karen agrees. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, the next one is also from Ruth under personal property. Personal property should not be captured in a TIF. Um, I think that this is an uh, affordable housing tip, so I think that, um, again, that's not necessarily... Um, and the, the reason there is that we, t we don't want to have them be being reimbursed tax dollars on personal property. 
that's right. that there cool. are, for which there are other reimbursement right. programs that exactly. are getting. Okay. Okay. Makes sense. Yep. Um, next comment is also from Ruth under amount of funds, the amount of funds agreed to in the CEA. If we do not have a do not exceed amount in a CEA TIF, can we ensure that it is so stated perhaps somewhere in the definitions? I don't know what that means. Actually, this is getting to the concerns that you guys were just expressing yeah. quite a bit. I mean, this is putting the TIF funds reimbursed, return to the developer, will not exceed over time the amount of, oh, wait, no, no, I lied. So, yeah. So other towns limit that to 40 or 50 percent. Strike that. Our range Collect. is 20 to 100 percent. Here. No, this is what this is saying is the developer can't collect more than we've agreed to. That's all that's saying. Correct? With some CEAs are open-ended, the percentage only. Other ones oh, are percentage right. with caps, uh, no more than so much per year and so much overall. Yep. Uh, it all depends how they're constructed. Can I piggyback on that for a second to also I know we keep circling a little bit, but perhaps using this framework to guard against, like, for, I mean, Tom just said some of these policies have caps. Well, I think we should have caps. So if you had a, let's say, a $20 million cap, and if you needed, if, if it was over that $20 million, then you trigger the referendum, just as we're all kind of thinking, you know, if, if some policies actually have caps, right? If we create a reasonable cap, that makes sense, which I don't know what that is. Oh, you, I mean, you're, gotcha. Do you see what I mean? Like, it might solve, it might answer the referendum question and the cap question at the same time. Yeah, yeah this policy could, uh, and I it discourage you from trying to be specific about that, but to preserve the notion that a credit enhancement agreement ought to have an agreed upon That's total reimbursement. Yeah. Right. And then maybe 100,000 in one case and 10 right. million in another. It depends on the scope of the project, right. so on right. and so, so forth. But are you recommending that? I mean, I would. We've that's used that successfully. Yeah. We did it with doing the expedition. We did it with the. Um, this isn't one with the downs per se. So if that was Ruth's comment, I would agree with her comment that we should all CEAs going forward should have a cap. Annual or overall? Or both? What? Annual, annual or overall or both? I think it should be overall. I think we. We've negotiated, the thing we've negotiated now has a certain, you know, is, what is it, uh, it's 40%, but then there are performance bonuses, and I don't know that we've ever calculated what's the equivalent if all of those performance bonuses are hit, which are mainly time, time bound, I mean, you know, they're mainly deadlines for completion, which right. these guys I'm sure can knock the cover off the ball before. I think it was 82 million is the cap. Or, yeah, that, there was that models cap. them yeah. unlocking all of their yeah. potential, right. meeting all of their yeah. potential. So, so, so if we did that, and then <laughs> if we if we if this policy has a cap that we can agree on, and then if we want to trigger a referendum, if that if if somebody's requesting over that cap, that might be a good way to address these concerns. I, I I'm not opposed to that. I mean, yeah. if you're actually if you're going, that implies that you would do a total costing. That's what I'm saying. It forces people down. right. Yeah. It forces well, everybody to actually cost it up. Uh, but, yeah, the only the only problem with that if, if the people did you know it's still giving the town council the authority, say it's a twenty million dollar cap, mm -hmm. we could still approve of a TIF and a CEA for twenty million. Yep, and the taxpayers well, might be pissed. Yep, agreed. And, and so having the the trigger be something up front. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. So so yeah, when we get there, but if, if the question's on the table about the cap, I think do you guys agree there should be a cap? Yeah, it? I do. And well, I think and the Tom, fourth uh, the fourth bullet there. Terms may include a reimbursement cap. If you want to strengthen that, you say terms shall include. Yeah. And I don't think you should define it because it's going to change project by project. But the, but to cement and codify yeah. the expectation that we're going to negotiate yeah. a cap that makes sense to both parties. And, and maybe to your point, remain silent on whether it's annual or gross because you could each one could be different. You would need to say a cap. You can add both or right. one or the other. Just say but a you cap. have to have one. Yep. Just say a cap. The so shall have a cap. I think shall answers shall that question for you. Well, here are you flipping pages at me or moving on? Oh, we're, no. <laughs> so I'm still at, so, um, um, I'm on another. To, uh, Ruth had a comment about can we include that property taxes must be paid prior to distribution of the enhancement agreement payment. Paul says, I agree with this. I think that we all, 
the that's just it. That's just necessary. necessary. The way it works. You can't. Right. Yeah. But if, you can't if get you're paid. interested, the language that I've just typed in here as a suggestion, happy to erase it, is no reimbursement shall take place until property taxes are paid. Yeah, can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. What happens if people are delinquent on their property taxes? Does the developer take that hit too? Or? We don't reimburse in that credit enhancement agreement. Right. We don't pay until we receive. So the de developer would not get their. No. Correct. Okay. That's good. Which is what that says, but I just wanted to ask. That's it. a good yeah. yeah. So we like. Uh, that. And that's the way the that's the way the law works. I mean. Yeah, you're stating the the obvious, but there's no harm in stating it yeah. for everyone's comfort. Well, it's not obvious to a lot of us, so mm -hmm. that's good. Yeah. I like it. We're good. That's okay. okay. Um, and then we've changed it to shall include. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, next page, next comment is from Councillor Hamill. Um, under suspension and or termination of benefits, credit enhancement agreements may contain provisions for the suspension and or termination of benefits to the applicant as provided for in the agreement. Councillor Hamill is suggesting adding the language. This may include penalties as well as clawback provisions of tax revenues paid to the developer for not meeting agreed upon targets to performance thresholds and timing. Is that legal? Well, the, I think I think some of it is um, <laughs> renders the uh, what we've been told the clawback pr provision is the problem. Um, and a bank, and we talked to a couple of banks originally because we were looking at when oh, we were doing so this. This would impact their yeah, financing. Yeah, it renders the credit enhancement agreement not relevant. Um, it, it no longer enhances the credit um, if there's a clawback. And I think we can do a little more due diligence on, on that and maybe talk to a couple of other um, bankers. My one conversation um, with a commercial lender said, you know, we're probably better with penalties, okay. but not the clawback. Right. Yeah, right. I'm Pen okay with that. Penalties are performance. So yeah. they cannot lock higher performance based, or higher reimbursement based on performance. Yeah. So there's other ways to structure it. Mm -hmm. But I, then also I, I refer to penalties as sort of, uh, they're not meeting minimum thresholds. So right. you're not done with the thing by the time you said you were going to be. So there's a penalty because inherent, because there's no captured value to fund anything, but <coughs> some somebody else suffered a loss, right? I mean, is there, so would that, I mean, or is that something that would just take uh, place in another forum? You know, if someone would just, you know, go to the courts or whatever. So what's that scenario where a project simply does not perform to expectations, that, you know, things don't really happen and no value is created? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, and you're saying, you're suggesting maybe the penalty of not getting well, paid is the, you know. Well, in that scenario, scenario, if they don't create the value, they don't get the reimbursement, so there's no right. no harm done, so to speak. Yeah. Um, the, what became abundantly clear, particularly with the downs, is that the credit enhancement agreement was a critical part of collateral for them to go secure private finance. Right, right. So I think we need to be mindful of that. That's yeah. Karen's point. I think there's ways to address your concern right. through either penalty mm -hmm. components yeah. or, um, Turning it positively is kind of performance based. Yeah. Start with a lower percentage, let them right. unlock higher potential yeah. if they perform. Because I know the way we wrote our performance enhancements, it was all above. There were no sort of on the, the you know the low end. You know, there's no you know was um, it a drop below forty percent? There was no, there is. Well, there's the second I mean, ten years they go to twenty five. If they don't hit the first well, benchmark. Ten, ten years into it. I mean, so I, I that's just something I would like to see as a threshold requirement rather than have it kick in in later years, so it's going to apply, not apply. And I think they're, they're phrased more as incentives, so you just that's keep right. them low, yeah, and then yeah. if they hit the high bar, they yeah. get a higher, you know what I mean, instead yeah, of, fine. right, it's six of one, half dozen the other, but if you if you do it, because yeah, technically, the CA at downs, it's 25%, right. and then if they do X, it's 40. Okay. So, so although we're using the word penalties, I think it would be actually framed as incentives. Right, exactly, right. Start low, and if you actually do this, you'll get whatever that number so is. So we're confident that if none of us are here, then those will be negotiated someday, you know, and, in the future. Yeah, and you can't have termination requirements. If you don't do this by a certain date, right. I think that's in the um, downs. Yeah, if they don't rights. perform, right. you know, it may be a 30-year tip, but it goes standard, away. Standard, uh, you know, uh, contract, mm -hmm. uh, you know, breach of contract yep. penalties. Yeah, yeah, we would call, call them a default and cease yeah. payment right. and go to court. And, yeah. mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> It, we, there's all sorts of um, interesting components of that credit enhancement agreement. Um, other, you know, agreements, community center, school, downtown, residential 
single family home caps, if, you know, we would have to decide if there's a violation, what the consequence is, but like any contract, you call them the default of it, and mm -hmm. there's consequence. Okay, so Larissa has given me the computer. So okay. It's a little scary here. We scared okay. her, we scared, we scared <laughs> her away, didn't we? Yes, no, yes. She's, 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 she's all done. <laughs> uh, so the next no, comment, which I can't read that far away. Let's see if I can do this without unplugging it. Yay, there we go. All right, so this is... Um, Don's comment, which is a, um, the development project must be consistent with Scarborough's comprehensive plan. It's not just the, inconsistent. I mean, it's so, that's so fluffy. Yeah, I so think, pretty. Paul, so, are you going to... Wait, what, in fairness, read, read my comment afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> read my comment afterwards. I says, we went back and Thank forth you. on this. I'm glad we had a fresh set of eyes suggesting this change. Because yeah. this was my language, and it was horrible. So thank you, Don. Yeah. yeah. It was kind. Yes. It was just kind of yes. Way. And to your point, I think you're, you're if you want to share where that No, you don't from. have to. Okay. You know, I appreciate you being nice, but we don't have to. It's, <laughs> I'm done. Okay. <laughs> um, next comment is Don's, and it's, um, when necessary, the town may request the applicant, um, the, it must, must, re, must, may request, and the applicant must provide cost information e.g. cost of infrastructure, sewer, utilities, etc., via confidentiality and non-disclosure agreements to be executed by the parties. Mm -hmm. So my point in doing this is based on experience. You know, we, we funded some of these things in the current um, deal that we have. We never saw the numbers. Somebody saw the numbers, but uh, the decision makers never saw them. The folks that voted on it never saw them. So I would like to say, and I get tired of hearing this argument from developers also, I'm gonna, you know, it's a, I got a deal that's pending, I can't reveal any details. Well, the decision makers need to see the deal levels and there's a way to do it and it's called confidentiality and non-disclosure agreements and uh, they, you know, they need to see that stuff. If we're, and these are not insignificant figures. So I think that, you know, and I know when we went through this, we had a professional look at it and evaluate it, but if, if it's, Material and something that's still a big part of the decision, then we ought to see it, and that we ought to have a way to, to make that available yeah, and protect it. I, I, mean. I 100 percent agree. I'm curious if, if, I mean, is it is it standard that a developer wouldn't? How does that typically work? Well, there's competitive. There's proprietary information that they'll want to protect. That's I, I think so, it's good you're acknowledging that. But if they so have, have a, a hard time seeing but if they have public officials that are signing an NDA, then. No, no, that's yeah. way around it. Right. Yeah. Right. So you would see it. It, right. it might not be made public, but yeah. summaries we, and we at least see it. Right. I just I, I don't understand the benefit of doing these deals without with complete asymmetric information, and then so yeah, I agree. And and I know the, the argument I'm sure is is because they want to protect their their bargaining position and, and you know, get a get a good deal for themselves. I don't know what's proprietary about a sewer. Okay. You if, know. They, if they want to no, speak. it, it wasn't, at least in this most curtain go around, their concern was that uh, they had a market study that um, they paid dearly for that had valuable information that others would be interested in, competitors, like Rock Row and Westbrook perhaps. Uh, that was their stated concern. Right. Um, anyway, and, and right or wrong, we used a, our selected independent consultant is the right. one that signed that NDA, yeah. had full use and access to the documents and provided comments. Were we reimbursed for the cost of that independent consultant? No. no. All right, so I mean, that's, I mean, we, you know, why we run around spending the money, I don't, you know. Well, right. yeah, I think that's, yeah. There was a level of analysis that staff wasn't capable sure. of. And, right. But we, we accepted that cost burden to. We did. Right, so. Yeah. Which will be a comment I have later on, but I mean, right. to me, what really irritates me about it, if, if they want $80 million from us to be a good business partner, it's got to be a two-way street. And, you know, if they don't trust us that signing these documents, we're, that's not a, off to a good start to the okay. business transaction. So I, I agree with the language. Yep, I do too. Yeah, we do too. Yep. Right. Thanks, Don. That's Thank good. Um, next comment um, I, from Don. Um, the developer must comply, um, instead of being compliant, must comply with all statutory and regulatory guidelines of the town of Scarborough and the state of Maine. It's just more affirmative language. Yeah, sure. it's, it's a, it's a yeah. tweet. Yeah. So I'm just going to check that box. I'm, whoops, I should have checked. 
with this box. Okay. Um, next would be um, from Don. Any developer who requests incremental funding for subcontractors or additional improvements within a previously approved TIF district or CEA agreement must comply with the requirements of this policy in full as described herein. So my question is, can they do this? Can somebody, you know, well, you know, take the downs with the edge. They're just going to come in and build something. Do they, do they get incremental money because of what they have done with that? It's a, 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 an enhancement within, a, a, an additional development within an existing TIF and CEA. So the edge wouldn't, because the, the, the CEA arrangement with, um, the downs was that money was dedicated to infrastructure. Right. It wasn't dedicated, it wasn't, you know, we're not, they weren't no. giving it to other companies as in, in, as inducements to come. Um, so. But Karen, to be fair, there's no requirement. Right, they can, That money is theirs to do what they will with. Right. They used the argument that they had extraordinary infrastructure costs and that's what they needed to, the assistance for. Right. But if we wish to do, um, provide additional reimbursement for a particular development within the existing district, within the Downs, you would uh, negotiate and construct a new CEA with that entity. So Absolutely. that's what I'm trying to get at. I don't want them to ride off the same deal, you know. And yeah, they, they well, wouldn't. That's, right. They, that's, they can't. Yes, it would be a separate yeah. CEA. I think that's the way we would approach it if there's another right. company. And partly that would be on, on us. It's us. It's our job to make that determination if we wanted to wanted to, to assist another company. So I just may have been illustrating my lack of mm -hmm. knowledge yeah. as a yeah. layman, yeah. but I you know I don't know if it was a, if this would even be possible, but that was my concern. Yeah, I think I don't I don't I'm not for adding this simply because I don't know what it exactly addresses just because of everything we just said. Yeah. Um, and frankly I it, since we're using the downs because that's the yeah. example I mean, I'm, I'm okay with the Downs negotiating with their, their side of the CA. They can do whatever they want with it. Right. So I don't want to, you know, and like, for instance, I don't even know, like, would we call the edge a subcontractor of, you know, I don't think that's, I don't think some, I don't think the definitions line up here in this case, so. But let me stick with me for, the, yep. for a moment. Say, you know, the edge is going to build this and they're going to own it. Yep. And they're going to want to get 40, the same deal that, but Rasperi can give that to them. We're not, right? But but my question is, you know, is that incremental or you know, is somebody double dipping? Is that okay? What's the, how do we, what's, you know, how do we decide whether that's kosher or not? They, or they would need to business? come forward and say, yeah. hey, here I am. Yeah. I want to do this. I would like. Right. So this. they got to follow the same process. Yeah. Same yeah. process exactly. you'd prove right. yeah. 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 us. Even in an existing sense. TIF, we're assuming this applies to right. um, new CEAs. This, so that, that's what I was trying to say. Okay. This and scenario is likely to play out uh, in the very near future. There are <laughs> some big entities. Action learning. Right, <laughs> right. So I th we could, m might be able to simplify this okay. and just say so something as simple as all new CEA agreements must comply with the uh, current policy. Yeah, I'm fine good. with that. Yeah. Thank you. Less than more. Okay. Oh, it's me again. We're on home stretch here. Okay. Um, next, um, from Councillor Hayes. Yeah. Um, let's see. How do you like my new? How do you like the J and everything? Yeah, that's nice. Uh, yeah. It's a common. Yes. It's a common typo. It's yeah. fine. It's, there you it's go. accepted. There you the go. HJ combination uh, is accepted. <laughs> only to businesses where the land and buildings are owned by the applicant, least commercial interest and en entities will not be considered. And then your question was, um, how does uh, Scarborough Downs lease space qualify? Um, the the agreement was the with the original developer to fund the infrastructure. Um, so I think we are we we would not enter into an agreement with somebody. We have to enter into an agreement with the with the owner at the time. Um, I'm not sure if I'm answering the question correct for you. So um, I mean, I guess where I get confused in the terminology. So the CEA applies to Scarborough Downs. Mm -hmm. They're getting money based on the increase in value of properties. Right. I was I was assuming this was saying 
I interpret it as that if then if if Scarborough Downs lease builds and leases a space to somebody, is this saying that that would not be considered for the increase in value? No, it would. Uh, okay, it would. It, it was confusing to me how it okay. was written. Who so, pays the tax bill is different potentially, right? But that's not our concern. Someone is going to pay a tax bill. Right, so what do we go off? So it, so this would be, in this case, because the CA was with Scarborough Downs, mm -hmm. if they own the building and they lease it to somebody, then it counts into the increased value. Yes. Yes. What if they own the land, but someone else, they lease the land, mm -hmm. but someone else builds the building? Do they get the building value in the CEA? Sure. In this case, yes. It might get complicated in terms of who gets the tax bill for what. Maybe the mm -hmm. land bill goes to someone. It, it will be just... so, so how does the lease commercial entities will not be considered apply in that language? I think that was intended for um, if you're creating a new credit enhancement agreement yeah. the, and you don't own the property at, at the time you're coming forward and you're leasing a building you're not eligible. The owner of the building would be eligible at that time, but not somebody who's strictly leasing. I okay, I'm going to learn what it means. Yeah. Either. I mean, we're, we're, are, were other people confused by that language? Which, and I am, if so, you know what? I, I would be okay with strike. I mean, I, I get what it's trying to say, but I also understand the confusion. I'd be okay with striking it all together. Okay. Let, let us just maybe look back to the rules and policies. Okay. It, it doesn't make sense as written. Yeah. Okay, uh, all right. Let's Fine. Just make like, sure. I, I sure. understand. I can't go say, "Hey, I'm going to lease Humpty Dumpty. Give me a TIFF. Right. Or give me a CEO. Oh, I understand that. Yeah, I, but, I, but I don't know what this says. I, I, I was concerned because I read this as if, if you know, someone comes in and leases a space from right. that it wouldn't be eligible for right. the CEA. Right. Why we're that saying, language there if it right. can be understood okay. the wrong way? Yeah. Yeah. No. Okay. So, suffice to say, however, uh, behind the scenes through a lease relationship, who pays the bill is immaterial to us and. The CEA is agnostic. We don't care who pays the bill. Someone is. And then yeah. we reimburse based on the terms of the CEA. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, I, I was just confused check. by what it meant. So. Let's check. Uh -huh. Okay. Next so one's mine. Next? I would just suggest this one also ties back. We added in here later to step six. So it's in two, it's in two places. We're talking about adding the finance committee in. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, yeah. And, I, and I think this becomes, it gets to Councillor Johnson's question about one was talking about the TIF. Yeah. Now this is talking about the CEA. Right. And I guess I would be in right. a place of saying probably the finance committee should be involved in both. The front end. Well, I like the front, the front end. end nature of this um, for the CEA. And also I was going to mention on step six of the CEA, it's in there as well, or I proposed that as well. But I'm not unhappy with the oh, I see. places. I just don't know. I'm trying to think of what it would be like. Are we going to go through applications as a finance committee? So this I, I, CEA applications? The, the, the work I think we get the best of them, not the... Yeah. The workflow that was envisioned is that uh, SEDCO and staff would work with onboarding, kind of getting the application complete. We're not negotiating terms. We're making sure that all the materials yeah. are in place. Yeah. Uh, and then the, the, uh, the review it comes to this body. Well, I, but I guess what I think what Don and I might be saying, having lived through that, the finance committee was never involved in sort of the negotiation or drafting or seeing mm -hmm. the CEA before it came to the town council full body. I think there may be some value, whoever, that the finance committee before, mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. like the budget, like everything yeah. else, yep. before it comes to the town council, the finance committee, whoever is on it at the time, has a chance to ask some questions or clarification. So wherever that gets inserted, I think, Don, is that what we're saying? I actually, now that you talk about it, I like it in both places because more than half the battle, I, th I think, uh, uh, is has been playing catch up. And so by the time it's presented, by the time, you know, the deal is uh, in full form, you know, we really are playing, you know, have a hard time getting up to speed. I think we were involved in the front end in some fashion, like this mm -hmm. one suggested, and not reviewing all applications, but the winners or whatever would say, hey, this one's coming forward. It would help us be better at doing our job so that by the time that we're on step six and actually evaluating terms and looking at details and analysis, we, you know, we have some water wings. You know, we, 
and uh, yeah, and, and out as a town council member, if you have, if we have new members on, our model has always been the finance committee usually has more tenured. They've kind of been through stuff. I would rely a lot on if the finance committee says I recommend X, Y, or Z, that gives me as a town council a little more comfort that, because, anyway, that's just my thought. Yeah, I think the intent was really in terms of responsibility is for Karen and I, or who's ever sitting in our chairs, um, receive the application, help kind of put that together so it's to a point that's worthy of consideration. I don't think anyone's saying that the Finance Committee isn't the one to be roll up your sleeves and be involved in that evaluation of the application and ensuing negotiation, as it, right. as it were. And you would <coughs> see the, fin uh, just a clarification, the Finance Committee um, would do their work before you have that, because there's this joint meeting of the full council and Right. Um, so the finance committee makes that determination whether or not the application should move forward to the um, joint uh, committee or joint workshop, if you will. Can we work with this language? Are you guys, are you yeah, okay yeah. if yeah, yeah. yes if leave it to staff you know to um, work with the applicant to, to get an application completed and money's paid and so on and so forth and then be clear that the Finance Committee will be involved in the rigors of review and mm -hmm. analysis and negotiation. But I say if we're not involved in the, the vetting of the applications, there should still be some notification obligation or you know, FYI, this is coming. And that's a similar, you know, similar issue that I have is that if it were simple notification issue, hey, the Finance Committee, this is coming, they okay. cleared the application, this is what it looks like, you know, this is not to be shared with anybody, uh, you know, beyond a small group just yet, then we'll come back with analysis when we want to do uh, a more extended reveal. So, but I, I think that uh, there's some advantages to having us on the front end and also when we're looking at numbers. Okay. So, and um, so do you want to see it in order to say, uh, also to say, hey, we think we need more information here um, and we might need some expertise or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I think it'd be a notification and an opportunity for us to ask questions, hopefully not slow down the process, but just say, okay, great, thanks for letting us know. Um, you know, here's some other factors, or here's what we've heard, could you look at this? Hopefully not slow it down, but then it comes back around when it's, you know, this is uh, fully loaded now, and here's what the numbers look like, and we need to quickly to, so we've had some some background on it. I just, you know, it's hard for us, to, hard for me personally to kind of get up to speed quickly, seeing something, you know, that's in full form and mm -hmm. it's got up ahead of steam. Is, can we foresee any um, disadvantages to this as far as negotiation is concerned or? Um, just availability of, of folks on finance to be available when so the other party is available. And so they notice somebody... they should notify the chair then, you know, the chair, yeah. the responsibility of the chair to notify the members, you know, try to streamline it if we could. Yeah, I, listen, I don't think that it's intentional sometimes when counselors feel like, hey, you know, this is, I I'm feel so rushed here, but I couldn't agree more with what's being proposed as long as we're not adding no. some sort of prohibitive timeline. So <clears throat> I think my biggest concern would be let's not drag something out eight months, right? And I don't love more government involved in some of the stuff, but I do think as a counselor, we find ourselves oftentimes, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't instill a lot of confidence if a counselor is behind this table saying, well, I feel like I don't know all the information, right? So this is any time we can make steps to improve that and, yeah. and make sure that counselors are aware of this maybe a month and a half before and the appropriate updates are coming, I think that that can't hurt anybody. So, but, You know, by the same token, doesn't it make some sense to use your professional staff to uh, make sure something's even worthy to see the light of day? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we yeah I don't think we're saying, I don't, yeah, Tom, I don't think we're saying that. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 Responsibility yeah. at all. It, it could be a total waste of your time. We, yeah, you know, yeah. No, I mean, I think we're saying once we, I read it as once we get to the final. That's how I read it as once okay. you guys decide it was worthy, then it would come here. Right. So if there's yeah. a dog, then just, I don't think yeah, we yeah, need you, to know about the dog. You, okay. You don't have to waste your time with that. Okay. I mean, now, I don't want to. If, I'm okay with that. Okay. I just, uh, what happens is, uh, you know, we're going to have to work on it, and I think uh, different individuals may do it differently, but um, it's, it's an opportunity for us. And just a clarification, too. So the application, when it comes to you, you know, is not a negotiated contract. It's 
but they want this amount. Of, yeah, right. it's the application. Yeah, so here it is. Sure we're not. Yeah. We're not doing any negotiation yeah. before. Right. Um, we need you guys to say, yeah, yeah let's right. let's keep this going. Exactly. We're not proving it, but it's sound enough that we want to uh, move right. it forward. Here's the opportunity. Does it make sense to move forward? Okay. That's it. Yeah. And we're down to the last one, I think. The last. Last page. So. I mean, yeah. unless you want to go through the. You want to go through the application? I don't. No, nope. I don't. <laughs> 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 limited, limited comments there. And so there was a, a I guess the next one is submitted non-refundable application fee as referenced in the schedule of fees. Whoops, sorry, I touched something else. Um, as referenced in the schedule of fees published annually by the town. So, and then there's, uh, well, I should stop and It's mostly me. My first question was, okay, that that's fine. And, I guess we could look at the fees at another time. My only question was, did Skyward Downs pay that fee? My bigger issue became the second bullet. There's a deposit of $1,500 to cover staff, but I'm thinking back to Scarborough Downs. Mm -hmm. I bet we spent five, yeah, over five figures on legal fees alone trying to get that CEA through. So I'm thinking we should have a much bigger up front, I mean, it gets to your point, Paul. We hired a consultant to look over the numbers. We hired that. To me, should be on the on the developer side, not on the town side. Yeah, and actually, other policies have um, the applicant will not only uh, pay application fees; they will incur bear the fees, fees yeah. right. of the town and yeah. processing the thing. So. Yeah, so I agree with everything you said, except for the fact, again, I don't want to craft this from the downs downward, right? So if it's a smaller project, I don't want to be, I don't want it to be cost prohibitive. Absolutely. So what I do agree with is I think the deposit could be bigger, and I don't think we, I don't think it's a deposit, I think it's a non-refundable deposit. <laughs> yeah. um, so I agree with every, or, right? or, or maybe we just leave it open-ended, there's not a dollar amount, but it just says they, they will pay for the reasonable cost that we will incur to get consultants and or and maybe fees. not to exceed or something to be better yeah. well I, you know i don't know I, or a minimum of well, or a minimum of just 20. to be clear the way this is constructed uh, though we've not indicated what the fee is that there is a non-refundable application fee right got that uh and then on top they create this oh, deposit okay. right. against yeah. which we draw we oh draw i think I, I think i misread that to so, pay for expenses so what is the non-refundable application i don't think we've determined that it would gotcha. it exists over in the scheduled fees yeah. that's a discussion point you could have well the application <laughs> fee shouldn't be too big because you might get somebody that comes in right. shakes the tree they get nothing and then they're gone so right. i think the heavy hitter should be more of the final application because that's when some serious cost would be well considered. but but to me so when it says final application, that just means if we have three people that are applying, is it just the one that comes to the finish line? Or, and I guess, I mean, my point is $1,500 to draw from right. does not cover what our costs are going to be to bring forth a full proposal. So I would like to see some other language totally that agree. says yep. we get reimbursed reasonable expenses that we're going to incur to evaluate the application and i think we could probably pull from um the planning department because we have those we have that language in there yeah. to cover mm -hmm. yeah. um you know peer review and things like that so why don't we pull that language um, yeah and i like the know, deposit that, though because yeah. i like to have the money in hand yeah. oh that's fine um, I mean, we can as say, opposed to chasing them sure but it has so to be it, it has to be a higher number right, right. and it's it, it you know for the smaller projects yeah, it might hurt to put up the money, but we'll return it if we don't need it. If it's you know, if it's but, low bar. But what do we do if the deposit's not enough? Say we set it at ten thousand, we end up spending a hundred. I don't think that should be on taxpayers to. Well, one way to do that is at the finance committee. You're going to take a look at the initial application. And you're going to say, "Whoa, I need more information on X," and we should probably. And we may put some of those recommendations in line. Um, but it seems like in order for us to continue to evaluate this application, we need, you know, uh, uh, an analysis of the uh, uh, amount that they're asking for for infrastructure or something like that. Right. So, so and maybe, that way we can... So, so maybe the language is, yeah, some deposit of some amount, mm -hmm. but language that says we will also be reimbursed if expenses exceed mm -hmm. the dollar right. amount. Right. I think you, get, I think you get the forward. intent, yeah. right? You guys yeah. can grasp it. Let's from language on that. Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. yeah I think it. planning department has some... That was a good catch, by the way. Good yeah. language. Yeah. Because I ran out of steam by the time I got <laughs> <Right. laughs> So impressed that you... <laughs> 
Okay, so I think we have some um, that was great that was notes. Painful. I actually thought that went uh, quite well. well. Okay. Yeah. All good. We, we, we <laughs> promised a 90 minute meeting. <coughs> and and that's what we're going to get? Yeah. So uh, we had a couple of other agenda items. I know staff would heard to make this available for, for this meeting, 29 Black Point Road. And then um, I don't know if there was anything new in public safety building shortfall. The last item there about next steps in joint finance committee, I can you know, cover it five minutes at the very end. But So what do we want to spend time on here and how much time in the next two minutes? We said well, I, I would be okay with making a motion to adjourn, but I don't want to be, I, if that doesn't please you guys. And You know, for me, just on the Black Point Road piece, if we are going to adjourn and move this forward, the other thing I'd request this, does a great job of summarizing expenses and rent income. But from my perspective, it looks like we're not making a whole lot of money on it. And the other missing piece is what is the capital investment we're going to have to make in the next three years? Because that was what prompted this. If we're only making a net of 50000 in rental income and we have to put 200000 into it, um, where I see we're obligated to 2022, but frankly, if we were going to sell it, we need to start the process now. Mm -hmm. So I'm yeah, missing, I don't really the yeah, missing yeah, piece yeah. of information. The, the capital piece is under further scrutiny right as we speak. I just don't have updated numbers. Um, the numbers that have been talked about in the five year CIP were total guesstimates and outlandishly high, in my opinion. So I've tasked staff to work with some uh, area contractors and professionals to come up with with more exact numbers there. So I mean, fully expect to have that maybe as soon as next month or next meeting. Okay. So that outlandishly high, I mean, I, 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 and that's what triggered this for it me. It was six ago. figures. In a, in yeah, a, I mean, yeah. it was big. I mean, I thought it was mid six figures somewhere. Yeah, it's it's an old, it's got an old steam system. Right, that boiler. was the big, I mean, that was 200,000 alone, I thought. Uh, not just the boiler, but all the piping replacements yeah. is really where the money is. So um, we've also had some success with this current tenant to share some of those expense, capital expenses through the years. And so that's an area that's worth broaching with them. Um, just as a conversation point, I, I also need to check in what their long range expectations are, if they could have a decision in that regard. Yeah, but I mean, that, that I mean, I would bet it might be worthwhile getting a market appraisal of the property too because that could help with some of the other capital improvements we got coming so i mean the capital projects we got coming but that's a valuable piece of property sitting there it is i will tell you there's at least two committees uh that have for almost the entire time i've been here talked about uh the, the redevelopment potential of that land particularly uh, affordable housing has been keenly interested in that property for all sorts of reasons so um, i think if you wish to go forward there'll be others that will you know, would like to comment further about whether that's a wise move or there's some other reuse that mm -hmm. we should consider. Mm -hmm. So I will get the capital piece. Uh, this helps shape part of that conversation. Okay. And I guess the good news that I want the public to understand is that it's covering itself. We're actually making a little money. Um, they do pay taxes, they do pay rent, and it covers all the expenses that we have on the property. Right. Right, it, it, but it's the capital improvement that's really the investment yep. point. Is it if we put two, three hundred in it, we're making fifty thousand. We don't even begin to break even for years. So, whatever. Yeah, the the uh, the roof and the outside exterior are in good shape based on past investment. Uh, it's really the boiler, and that's the big the mm -hmm. big cost. So I will have that as soon as your next uh, next meeting. And on the public safety building front, just to give you an update, you know that number has not changed appreciably from last month, uh, a couple of thousand bucks one way or another. Um, I will say that uh, Ruth and Gina are looking at um, working hard to understand where those, you know, how we might close that gap, if you will. And uh, one of the areas is interest income. Uh, we've been borrowing sizable sums to fund this project. And um, in recent history, we've not had much interest they're just not paying anything in the market these days. It, that's changed a bit, so that's going to be part of the uh, matter we bring before you. I think we m may also have to deal with kind of the wrinkle that was um, alluded to earlier. The charter speaks to, this is 907, um, the $400,000 threshold uh, regarding bonding, uh, but it also alludes to overall project cost and kind of voter authorization that flows from that. <coughs> And so um, I've got a question to the town attorney. The bond referendum that went to the voters included, you know, a whole laundry list of the, the kind of the fiscal note, including <coughs> the project cost. 
and um, at this point we're certainly going to be exceeding that number. Um, what was the cost? Could you separate out the cost of voter input of a referendum? Give an estimate on that? Uh, I don't have it. I can give it to you exactly. It was, uh, it was noted on the ballot. Uh, <coughs> and then, again, this is not a new, uh, new issue. We knew at the time, this time last year, <coughs> before we signed contracts, that we were $420,000 above. Uh, we're now 520, so it's not appreciably different from where we started. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's a, an issue that I want to make sure we're uh, correctly addressing <coughs> as part of this as well. So I, I promised you, and I'll, I'll stay on that track, that I will provide a detailed recommendation, update and recommendation as to the source of funds um, by the end of the year. So hopefully the next finance committee will be willing to put this on the agenda. <coughs> so we'll be uh, referring those those issues as well as uh, what the, the finance committees want to do with, with any <coughs> joint finance committee uh, uh, activities. So with that, I think we'll look for a, a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for Thank you. Thank you. 95 minutes for joining us. Mr. Police, Mr. Police Center? What time is it? 4 30? Yeah, we have a 4 45. Oh, there it is. That's why I was, yes. Yeah, right. yeah. I didn't know that part. Yes, I was trying to give our constituent our. Okay. Um, yeah. I got a big home. Thanks. Somewhere in between. We start at 7, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thanks, guys. If you oh, nice call me in the side entrance,